Hello guys, back again with another video. Uh, for those who are new here, my name is Herdin. I am an architect and interior designer working full time as digital nomad. And I create content on YouTube to help and inspire architects and interior designers, design better projects, create better presentations, and of course, make more money. So if this sounds like you, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my latest videos. By the end of this video, you will be able to model this, this, or even this kind of patterns in 3ds Max in a very easy step. So open your 3ds Max and let's go. Let's start by creating a rectangle and adjusting its dimensions. In my case, I will go with 3 meters by 50 centimeters. Now right click and convert it into a detailed spline. Click on the vertices icon, then right click again, choose refine and add three vertices along this segment. After that, right click again to disable the refine tool and move the right side vertices to form some sort of broken line. And to make it curved, select these three vertices, right click and pick smooth, then select all these again, but this time pick the zero corner. Now play around with the green dots to reach your desired shape. Just feel free to be creative and not stick to what you see in this video. Once you are done, Go to the modifiers list and add shell modifier. Now we need to create a basic animation for the shape moving from the left to the right. To do so, turn on the auto key in the animation bar below. Move this key to the end, then go to the Y bar and type 500 centimeters or whatever you want. You click on the play button to see the animation. Now we need to make our shape dynamic a shape that changes its form while moving to the right. Keep the auto key active, move the key to the middle, then go to the editable spline and start changing the shape by moving and adjusting the vertices. Move the key to the end and change the shape again. By the way, you can create as many keys as you want. Just make sure to keep an equal distance between the keys. Now we can see how the shape is changing its form while moving. To make copies, go to the tools list and choose snapshot. Change it to a range, enter the number of copies you want and press OK. And it will create the copies along the path that the shape moves on. It looks good, but we still need to fix one problem. Maybe you've already noticed that the distance between the shapes is not the same. And that's because if you take a deep look at the animation, you will find that the speed starts slowly and increases and then drops down again at the end. To fix that, open the mini curve editor from this little icon, extend it up for better view, select all the vertices and click on this icon that says set to linear. Now come back again to the snapshot tool from the tools bar to create the copies and we will be done. Now let's say that you want to create the shape on a curved line like in this example. The process is always the same where we just need to create a path for the shape to follow, adjust the shape along the path and finally create the copies. To make our shape following this arc, start by creating a point, increase its dimensions and check the box icon for a better visibility. With the point selected, go to Animation, Constraints, then Path Constraints and click on the arc shape. You will notice directly that the point moves to the beginning of the arc. Move the animation key to check if the point is following the path. But in the top view, you can notice that it is not changing its direction while following the path. To fix this, just check follow from the parameters list. Now go back to our shape, adjust its pivot to the bottom and align it to the point by pressing the align button. Make sure you select local from this list and rotate it 90 degrees. With the shape selected, Click on the link icon and link it to the point so it follows its exact behavior. 
as in the first case, turn on the auto key and create new keys along the path while changing the form every time. Press the play button to check your animation and finally let's repeat the shape along the path by using the snapshot tool. One more thing to keep in mind is that you can also change the scale, direction or even add a new modifier along the path to reach wherever shape you want. Okay guys, that was the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know that 3ds Max is pretty wide software where you can reach the same outcome in uh, different ways. So if you know any other techniques that allows us to reach this 3D model, just let me know in comments below. Thank you guys and see you in the next one soon.